welcome to Christian Fitness. We love living life, so we're in our kitchen, love living life. We're gonna have a blast on today's show. Lori has a special recipe for... Hummus. We're gonna make hummus today. Real simple hummus. And we're gonna be in 1 Corinthians for our scripture, and the actual title for today's show is, Are You Flexible? We're gonna do a <laughs> flexibility test. So if you have a ruler or tape measure or something, go grab that real quickly. We're gonna use that for the test. It's a simple test. You can't fail it. It's just to see how flexible you are. But let's start with our hummus. I'm excited about this because we made it the other night and it is delicious. So what, let's start with the ingredients, honey. What do, we, what do they need to go grab real quick out of their kitchen? This one's really, really easy. There's a lot of hummus recipes out there. Mm -hmm. So go on the internet and find one. But this one, I'm not using uh, garlic I'm, and I'm not using tahini. Usually, a lot of times you'll put tahini, you put garlic in it, things like that. I wanted it simple because what happens when somebody pops over and you want to serve a little appetizer and you don't have anything? Well, if you always have garbanzo beans then or chickpeas, garbanzo beans are a Spanish translation for or, chickpeas. In Italy they call them CC beans. Yes. So anyway, a lot of yeah, different names yeah. for them. So anyway, it's one can of garbanzo beans rinsed really, really, really well. Um, and you're gonna put them in your food processor. This is this simple. Well, here, what else, tell them what else we, we've got a little bit of pepper. She's gonna put a little bit of onion in it. You're gonna just a little bit of salt or pepper if you wanna flavor it that way. And what is this, I forgot. Cumin. Cumin, <laughs> that's why I so, forgot. So, yeah, and I'm gonna grind this up for just a second. So real simple, only a couple ingredients. It only takes about four or five minutes to make, and that's what Lori talked about, you know, if somebody, Stops by Sorry. You want, no, go ahead. I'll, I'll stand way over here and continue to talk. But if somebody stops by unexpectedly, this is a great way to just go grab a can of garbanzo beans real quickly and mix up um, some hummus. And I mean, it's going to take us, you know, two or three minutes to make this, so it's really easy and quick to prepare. Uh, oh, but it's healthy. I mean, very healthy. garbanzo beans are good for you, or chickpeas, whatever you I like to call them, garbanzo beans. But I mean, it's it's a healthy snack. I mean, there's so many things that you can put with it. I mean, you can use just plain raw vegetables. Mm -hmm. You can use pita bread or chips or crackers. Like we today, just simple because of the show, we just did So what are you crackers. adding now? I am going to add um, a quarter cup of organic virgin olive oil. So it's just olive oil, that's it. I mean, just olive oil. Um, and then I'm gonna blend it again. And you want this nice and smooth. So if it's, if it's not smooth enough, then you can add more oil, you can add. And that's where a lot of times people will do tahini. Yeah, you really want it to develop almost like a paste because one of my that's favorite exactly things to do with it is use it as a spread, almost like a topping. Instead of mayonnaise or something on a sandwich, you can use hummus as your spread. Uh, but also dipping with the crackers and things, you don't want it clumpy and chunky. You don't want it as a nice, smooth, uh, dipping spread. So you may have to add water or you can add the extra oil. She'll, she'll add a little water to this one just to, just to make it a little well, more I only like added a, paste. a little extra water um, oil too because I kind of shorted it in that mm -hmm. because I'm not, you know, it wasn't. This is cumin. So it's a quarter cup. Did I get that right? Quarter cup of cumin and then um, a lemon. A whole lemon and I know you're wondering why is she rolling that well what it does is it helps promote the the lemon juice a little bit more lots of seeds in this one that way you know it's real <laughs> it's not a GMO seed um, so only just a couple ingredients that most of you probably have around your house maybe you know go get some cumin and keep it in your pantry uh, but that way when somebody drops by unexpectedly or just for a snack one night instead of having something unhealthy Two, three minutes, you can make some hummus, have some chips with it, whatever you prefer, pita bread, whatever your favorite chip is, whatever your favorite cracker is, uh, but just delicious, delicious, quick and simple, quick and easy. Now you can see everything is absolutely natural. She even used organic olive oil. Um, so it'll only keep for, they say about three, three days. days. I mean, yeah. it's, it's not anything that's really gonna go bad. I mean, it's beans, they're not gonna go bad immediately. So it will probably last longer than that, but they recommend three days. But it doesn't make that much. I mean, you're gonna, you're gonna be done with this probably the night that you make it. It won't last past that. If you have more than two people, it's gonna be gone that night or that I day when you make it. I dropped a seed. Oh, that's all right. It'll get ground up. <laughs> that's, that's what the food processor there is it for. Is. It won't hurt us. No, that's true. I mean, it won't hurt you, but anyway, I just rescued that seed or maybe rescued it from us. So one more good grind. One more really good grind. Um, I don't know why I'm having a problem with this. There. So. 
Pardon the noise, but it is noisy. Well, let's talk about some of the benefits, if they can hear us, if not, oh well. It's, we'll, put it, we'll put up a little Why don't you bubble. do that, and that way I can do this, but I mean, one thing I can say about hummus is that, one, it's, you know, garbanzo beans, are beans are full of protein. Right. So there's about 20, 24 grams of protein in a garbanzo, in garbanzo about beans. About 14 grams of fiber, which is great. So yeah, right. protein is fantastic. So you're getting a lot of protein with this, a lot of fiber, which is great for your diet. The good thing is there's only one gram of fat in the entire uh, 200 calories and one gram of fat. So, but there's fat in the oil. I yeah, mean. the fat in the oil, which is actually a healthy fat. So anyway, yeah. extremely natural, extremely healthy for you. Um, of course, we talked about the fiber, um, 14 grams of fiber which is half of your total daily needs. So just this little bit of hummus is gonna give you half your fiber for the day. So I just added a tiny bit of sea salt, which um, is good. I mean, and you could use the pink Himalayan if you like that. You use pepper, um, I mean, I'm whatever seasoning added, you like. Right? Only because we're not using tahini today and we're not using garlic. So a lot of hummus has lots of garlic in it. The, I know the hummus we made the other day, and we eat a lot of hummus. So you can put anything in your hummus. You can put um, peppers in it, you can put spinach in it, you can put anything you want to flavor it. I mean, red peppers, you can roast your peppers and put it in. So, um, you know, you can add just about anything you, you want to for a flavor, but this one I wanted it just to be plain and simple. And you can put it on just about anything. Yes. I mean, you can put it on celery sticks, you can put it on carrot sticks, you know, any kind of vegetable like that that you like. I just it's like it with crackers. Smooth. Yeah, it's actually pretty smooth. So that's it. It's done. You know, and if if you taste it and you're like, okay, don't really like that flavor, you can always add to it. This is a clean spoon, so nobody can use a spoon after me because I'm gonna try it. <laughs> so taste test. What's the result? Tastes like garbanzo beans. <laughs> Tastes like hummus. Right? That's, that's yeah. what hummus is. That's... I mean, that's what hummus is. Is it's just a garbanzo bean. But this one's a little plain. There's not a lot, a lot of, you know, like hum, um, tahini would change it. Um, what, it. What am I trying to say? Garlic. Garlic would very much change So we this. could take it and we put it in here for you, just for your presentation. The, careful for the, the blades, right? Blades. Yeah, just, but you can see how smooth that is. And that's just with a quarter cup of the olive oil and a little bit of water and then the lemon. And I noticed with, 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 with the tahini, it gets a little bit bitter, so you can always add more lem lemon and it balances it out. That's and there you go, your guests come over, there you go, you have a nice <laughs> little hummus with crackers or whatever you prefer. Quick, simple, all organic, very healthy for you, great fiber, great protein from the beans. Great on sandwiches, a as dish, a spread. Uh, yeah, as yeah, a you spread can see, instead of mayonnaise. You can see she added a little bit of the water, but you can see how nicely that would spread. I mean, I could actually do some artwork on the top of that. Anyway, <laughs> nice like spread. Like the happy face you did with the crackers, yeah, right? I did make them in a happy face. You probably couldn't see that, but anyway. Great job, honey, in the kitchen. All right, now it is time for our test. So run and grab your ruler real quickly, if you have one, or a tape measure. And we are going to do a flexibility test. So before we test, we want to warm up a little bit. And we like to warm up. We're going to do an upper body test and a lower body test. We're going to start with the upper body test. To warm up, we just want to do, just work your range of motion, which we call an ROM, or range of motion. We just want to do little circles with our shoulders. So you're just going to do little tiny circles just to warm up a little bit for your test. And the test is going to be very simple. This feels good. Yeah, just rotate the shoulders a little bit through their range of motion. Now for the test. This is very simple. We just want you to reach for the sky and then place your palm against your back and point your elbow up. And then you're going to try to touch hands with the other hand. So what I would do, I don't know if you guys can see that, but I would reach I with have the right mic. hand up and then reach the left hand down and see how close I can get with my fingers. And then your partner, or you could hold the ruler yourself and try to measure. You can. We were doing this the other day just to see if somebody could do this on their own. So but I'll turn this way so yeah, you can turn that way so, so I can see So you point at the you. ceiling, you put your palm against your back, and then you bring the other hand up behind. This, this side's a little more flexible. 
Well, and then your partner would measure. You're the same as you were the other day. So if your fingers overlap, that would be a positive. So I might measure, you know, plus one, plus two, plus three, however many inches it is. If you're negative, if your fingers, you know, if you're like this, if there's a gap, measure that gap. And that gap would be a minus three. So you would write that down, okay, on this date, I'm a minus three. And then you use that as your goal. So you test that flexibility and then use that as your goal to say, you know what, I want to get better. I want to be more flexible. I was a minus three a month ago. Where am I today? I'm going to test again today and see if I've done any better. Well, it's like me. I'm still rehabbing my um, shoulder. And the one thing that um, orthopedic surgeons will tell you is that they want you so you don't freeze your, sh your shoulders, don't get frozen. They want both arms equal. So, and that's if you're not, then you know, okay, one area you need to work on even more for flexibility. And mm -hmm. that's just for everyday living. You need to be flexible. Right. So, yeah, so my right shoulder from years and years of sports is a little, it's harder right. for me to reach same this way. Me. So yeah, that's yeah. one that I have to work on so that both sides remain the same. So now we're going to study for the test, all right? In our study, <laughs> how do you study? You perform the test. So you keep just stretching this way. If you have a towel, you could grab a towel. If you can reach, great. I mean, if you're that flexible enough to reach and you can lock your fingers, then you can pull down for about, and on a stretch, you want to go for about 10 to 30 seconds, and then you rest for 15 seconds. If you can't touch fingers, then you use a towel. And don't tug. Yeah, just, just pull down gently. gently. And this is something we've talked about this so many times in the show about when you take a shower, when you're drying, mm -hmm. you know, use your towel and, and, then, pull and, up and then pull. For 10 pull to both 30 ways. seconds. So in other words, you pull down and then pull up. Right. And as you're stretching, make sure to breathe. That's one of the most important yeah. things. A lot of times, Don't hold your breath. And first of all, you want to stretch to a point of tension, but not pain. Okay, <laughs> so right now I've got, let's, let's switch sides. I've got some tension because you're stretching. So yes, of course there's gonna be tension, but I don't want, you don't want pain. If there's pain, stop, okay? But you do want a little bit of tension, so you gotta actually stretch that out. And then you breathe, ideally you inhale through your nose and exhale through your mouth. So you just relax, inhale through your nose, exhale through your mouth. And just breathe for the 10 to 30 seconds and then you'll relax for 15 seconds. We'll take a 15 second break and then we're gonna do another one. So that really, that was almost a practice for the test. So now you get to study for the test. Now let's just pull the arm across. That's another good way to just stretch the shoulder. You just wanna pull the arm across. Make sure you're, you're not your strangling shoulder. yourself, right? Keep your shoulder <laughs> down. Just pull it across and again, get some tension, get some mild tension, but not pain. And you would relax, continue to breathe, pull it across to the other side. And then one of my favorites is to really open up the chest, is to place your hands like this behind your back. So put both hands behind your back, this way. And then you would put a little pressure to open up your chest. Just not, yeah, you're not pushing on your back, but you're just, yeah, you're just giving opening yourself up, just a little bit Try to pressure. pull your elbows back and pull your shoulders back and open up. And where's your tennis ball? Yeah, yeah. one thing that we encourage people to, is envision maybe a can of garbanzo beans <coughs> between your shoulders or a tennis ball between your shoulders and you're trying to squeeze it. You're trying to hold it there. So if I took the garbanzo beans and stuck them on Lori's back and said, you have to hold them there. Hold that can. Yeah, she would squeeze the can or squeeze a tennis ball, right. probably more appropriate. But squeeze the tennis ball and hold the tennis ball back between your shoulders, which really helps open up the chest. And this is, all these things are studying for your test. They're gonna increase your flexibility, but they're just simple stretches. You can do these anywhere at any time. Do them at your office, do them at the house, do them while you're watching TV. But those are just three simple, simple stretches for your upper body. And this is good for anybody, especially people. Now a lot of people are, have their heads down, they're, on, they're either on a computer or they're on a phone. So you really want your... So if you did the test with us, or do it again right now real quickly, here are some of the results. And uh, we won't tell you how we scored, but <laughs> if you're scoring at home, we'll put that on the screen for you. So that's the <laughs> upper body. Let's do the lower body test. Once again, for range of motion, we just want to warm our hips up and warm your legs up. So we're going to stand up, have you stand up at home. And we just want you to kind of just bring a knee up, just bring it up, almost like you're marching in place just to get the blood flow to your lower legs, Oops, get your hips a little loosened up. Hit the table. And then we just want to lean to the side just to warm up. We're not gonna do a 10 to 30 second stretch. We're just gonna lean for a second. And then just lean forward a little bit to loosen the lower back. Stretch your hamstrings a little, just to warm up. And you can bend your knees if you want to, to stretch forward. You can try to touch your toes. Just I'm a real a simple stretch. I'm not hitting the table. Now it's time for the test. All right, so you wanna stay seated. And, and I think Lori's just gonna measure because the table's kinda in the way. You want your knee at 90 degrees. And then you wanna put another leg out straight. 
and you want your ankle at 90 degrees. In other words, don't point your toes and don't pull your toes back. So just your ankle at 90 degrees, this knee at 90 degrees, this one fully extended. You're going to take both hands. You can do them either way, it doesn't matter, kind of like a couple pancakes or sandwich buns. And you're going to lean forward and see how far you can reach. So again, on the measurement, if I can't reach my toe, this would be negative, so I'd be minus three. If I go past, it would be positive, so that would be plus three. So that's how you would measure. So you want to measure me? Sure. And you'll do it two times on each leg, and whatever the best score is, that's what you want to write down. So on my right leg. I have a feeling you're already where we were. Doing OK? Yep. And you want to hold it for one or two seconds. So I'll do it again a little further for one or two seconds, and then switch sides. See how your other side does. You just lean forward. Well, this is a really good one or two. thing to see if your body is you know, if one side of your body see if I can get is further. more advanced than the other. Well, you're, yeah, you're really stretching now. So write your, write your score down and we'll put up on the screen. So let's see how for the average male at 60 to 64. But you're not 60. I know, but anyway, <laughs> that's, as, that's as low as the results went on the test results that we had. So if you're younger than that, whatever. Yeah. Anyway, good is zero. So if you're 60 to 64 and you can reach and touch your toe, that's a zero. That's good. You're doing good. So anything further than that, great. Uh, but anyway, it's not about you know gauging yourself against others. It's really about yourself. How, how well right. do you do? Um, so now let's study for that test. It's the measurement. Yeah, let's study for this test. So we're going to work on some flexibility of our lower body to help study for that test. Of course, as we said, one of the best ways to study for a test is to do the test, practice the test. So this would be just a great stretch, which we just did that, so we don't need to do it again. But a lot of people neglect stretching the calves and their shins. So let's stretch our calves. You, if you can reach your toe, great. Just pull it back. If you have to bend your knee, that's fine. Or but you can pull your toe if back. You can't, if you can't pull, you know, your toe, you can use a towel. Yeah, towels so you are could great. always do that. Dish towel, bath yeah. towel, whatever you have. Yeah, pull on your toe that way and just hold it for 10 to 30 seconds. Breathe while you're doing that. And then we want to stretch the shin. This is, is something people neglect quite often is the actual shin. So what you can do is if you're on a, a couch, you can just turn sideways, put your toe down and just have lean your knee in or Lori's actually going to use the couch. And then you just and she's going to dip her other knee so that actually you can see how this is starting to straighten out. That's going to really stretch that shin as well as what I'm doing well, on the ground. Well, you can do it. It's just, the shin. Yeah, I'm trying not to do too much because I sprained my ankle not long ago. So. Okay, now while she's up, this is also a quad stretch and that's right. another great one that we want to do next. So and if you're doing it on the couch, it's great for balance because yeah. I don't have anything to hold on to. So the next thing you want to do is just pull a leg up behind, point your knee down. You don't want it out here. Do you want to point the knee straight down? and just pull it up and again, hold it for 10 to 30 seconds. Breathe, relax, run and grab your Bible because we're going to do our scripture next. So you could actually get your scripture out and get ready to study that while you're stretching. And then the other leg. And Please. Lori, yeah, why don't you show them how to do it on the couch Whoa. again? I had to get my balance. Okay, so you hurts. can, let's say you can't reach, you could use a towel to reach. Yeah, if you can't reach, put your foot on your couch and just squat down. And as you squat down, you're putting pressure on. What I love about foot. that is, first of all, it's stretching the quad, which is what I was doing just by pulling it, but also you you're working closer. the strength. You're doing like a little squat with this legs. So you're actually working strength and stretching and you're stretching the shin. So yeah, this is actually a really good way to do it. So if you're sitting on your couch, at least get up and do this one. But this is a good way to study for the test. I like that study for the test. Then of course, hamstrings and lower back are really, important for your flex, your lower body flexibility. So you can just hold your heel out, bend this knee, and just kind of sink your hips back, almost as if you're gonna sit down again. And as you pull your toes back, you'll really feel it all the way through the calf, up through the hamstring, and in the lower back. So that's almost like the test itself, but you were seated for the test. So this way, we're just stretching while we're standing. I like that, feels good. Yeah, stretching feels so good. Plus, it heats up the muscles. It actually increases your metabolism. It is so, so good for you. So this is the something that would be really good to do when you first wake up in the morning. A lot of times people wake up and they're stiff. And if you're stiff and you start moving, you know, you will loosen up you, because you're getting all the blood flow to the, to the areas that you're stretching. And you'll find if you do that every day, you'll become more flexible. So you have everyday function mobility, which we talk about functional all time, mobility. Right. So all of these, the lower body helps with balance, helps you 
strengthen your lower body so that you don't have falls. Upper body is really important because then you can like reach in cabinets, you know, even, even stretching, everything that you do continues to keep your muscles strong, to con continues to give you upper body strength, which you need. Everybody needs that every single day. Yeah, just for what we call it everyday func things. functional mobility. It's just yeah. for everyday use. Yeah, like she said, reaching into the cabinet. I installed a couple ceiling fans this weekend. You talk about reaching overhead. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely had to be flexible to put the ceiling fans up this weekend. Right. But just everyday activities like that. The lower body flexibility helps increase, it improves your walking, it improves your gait. We always like to think of, imagine if someone, if you weren't flexible, that'd be like wearing a cast. So imagine a cast from your waist down. How would you even walk? First of all, you yeah. couldn't unless you could hinge your hip. <laughs> so try walking in a cast, but also for your balance. Imagine being in a cast from the waist down and you're almost, uh, if someone pushed you, how are you gonna stop yourself from falling? You can't, you would just tip over. So anyway, I don't know if that's a good analogy or not. It works for me, but anyway, imagine the cast. Hopefully that works for you <laughs> visually. Anyway, imagine whatever you want to. But anyway, so flexibility is so important. It helps you with walking. It helps you with your balance um, for everyday activities, just walking, getting up from the couch, doing everyday activities around the house. Uh, but stay flexible, test yourself, and then improve. Next month, test yourself again. A month Write later, it down. keep doing these yeah. and see how you progress. And uh, we'd love to see you get in that positive category instead of you know being negative, you know six inches or whatever. We want to see you positive so that there's an overlap. All right, let's get into our scripture. Hopefully, you guys have your cell phone handy or a Bible. Go and grab that. We're going to be in First Corinthians, great, great verse. It's going to be chapter four, verse twenty. So First Corinthians four twenty. 1 Corinthians 4.20 is, For the kingdom of God does not consist in words, but in power. That's the only scripture we're doing today. <laughs> yeah, normally we'll read before and after it and do you know entire chapters today. That's just your devotional scripture for today, and then we're going to spend a little time now uh, talking about that. Um, but it's just that one verse. 1 Corinthians 4.20, if you want to use that as your post-it or your devotional for today, write that down, put it in your journal, or post it on your mirror. Um, but Oh, it's incredible, incredible. We will give a little background on, on we don't just want to pull the scripture out and, and just hang on that one scripture. We like to actually explain well, we who do wrote it hang and where on it came from. Well, you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to take it out of context. Let me say it that way. We don't want to take it out of context. So this is Paul writing to the church at Corinth. And they had some problems, I guess we could say. They, uh, they well, were starting- they were a young church. They were a very young church. And young Christians, so. There was, was some division. They right. were arguing over who baptized who. Some said I was baptized by Peter, I was baptized by Paul. And they were arguing over who was baptized by who. And Paul basically said, wait, you were all baptized in the name of Jesus, not by a man. You're baptized in the name of Jesus. Don't look toward a man, look toward Jesus. Then they started listening to false teachers teachers that would come and <clears throat> what Paul called tickle their ears or just excite them in emotion, but there was no spiritual fruit from it. So they listened to these false teachers and were kind of veering off the original teachings that Paul gave them. So that's what he's telling them here. Don't be enticed by these words with no power. These false teachers had no power because they didn't have the power of God behind it. It was just words. It was almost, I think of it, um, you know, go to a sporting event or something or go see a comedy at, at a theater. You know, you laugh for a little while, but then you go home and <laughs> that laughter is gone. You go to a sporting event, woohoo, woohoo. You go well, home, especially if you lose, and you know, wow, there's kind of a crash. So those are words and actions that have no fruit. They have no evidence of, of, of power. And that's I what Paul's talking about. have a lot of different translations of this. And this is, I, I really like some of these. These are great. God's kingdom is not seen in talk, but in power. So knowing that everything God does, Paul, he's teaching that the kingdom of God is in through the power that he's received. But you think of Paul of all people. Here this is someone that persecuted Christians and did some really horrible things in his old life becomes a new creation by having a real experience with Jesus. So he of all people could tell them, look, God's kingdom isn't about words, but about his power. I mean, there's so many different translations that talk about this. this is, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of words, but power. And he's perfect one to say that because look at the display of how the power of God works in him. Lays hands on the sick, they recover, cast out demons, someone gets free. I mean, it's, it's a constant showing of who Christ is in him 
by the power of God, and the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Right, the evidence of that. And it's not just that external yes, power. Paul, absolutely. I mean, even the handkerchiefs that he touched, they sent off and healed people. So that power of God was flowing through him, and that's what he's talking about. But there's also an internal power, and that's what the gospel brings as well. When it changes someone's heart, that, that change of heart like Paul had from persecuting Christians and, and killing them to actually loving them so much that he's their spiritual father. <clears throat> the power Excuse of God me. working in us. You know, if, if you say something wrong or something happens or your attitude is wrong and you make that, all of a sudden you feel that, oh gosh, that was wrong, Lord, I'm sorry. And you make a, you know, you repent and then you make an adjustment. That's the power of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. in you causing you to all of a sudden go, why did you say that or don't say that or change this attitude? It's all the fruit of the Holy Spirit, but that's the evidence of the power working in you. Yeah, the evidence. Love is an evidence of that internal power. Peace, patience, kindness, all the fruits of the Spirit in Galatians that he talks about. The compassion love. <clears throat> the com yes, the compassion Not, love, yeah. Yeah, exactly. The compassion love, that's that internal power that he's talking about. Here, he's talking to the church, they were divisive, they were arguing over who was baptized by who. He's saying, that's not love, that's not the internal power that, that the Holy Spirit brings in you guys. That's not the fruit of the Spirit, that's not the evidence of the Spirit. Neither are, you know, so don't listen to these false teachers that just excite you with words with no power. There should be power behind the gospel. There is power behind the words of the gospel. He's not saying the words of the gospel, he's saying the words of the false teachers. In other words, well, don't hang on those words, hang on the words of the gospel. And the first, in the whole, whole first Corinthians, he talks about do as I have done or say as I have say, said because he knows he's walking by the power of the Holy Spirit. He knows that the Lord is using him mightily as he goes along. He is a witness of Jesus Christ. He's giving testimonies and that's the power, that's the evidence power of the Holy Spirit working in him. So he's saying imitate me, be like me. Don't be like others because what he's looking for is, is there an evidence of power in their, in their life? Are they doing it to benefit themselves or are they doing it to expand or benefit the kingdom? If they're doing it to expand the kingdom of Christ, then yes, that's the power of God working in. If it's a selfish motive, then that's not the power of God. So let's read another one. The, here, you read one. Yeah, I just want to read a quick one. For the kingdom of God is not just a lot of talk, it is living by God's power. And that's what he's telling them, live by God's power. Yes. So today, you can live by God's power by asking the Lord Jesus into your heart. And if you're not sure about your salvation, all you have to do is open your heart and say, Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart, forgive me of my sins. Thank you that you died on the cross for me and shed your blood for me. In Jesus' name. Thanks for joining us. God bless.